Hello, welcome to 3x point. In this session, our main focus is to discuss clustering or cluster, basically to introduce you to the concept of clustering. If I bring up this slide, there's a definition that I want you to focus attention on, and that is this. In a computer system, a cluster is a group of servers and other resources that act like a single system. That's the point in which I need you to understand at this point, a single system. So it's technically saying you have, you can have two servers, you can have three servers or even more, but they are working together as one. So if you want to connect to those servers together, you're basically going to have like a virtual name that represents all the servers if this doesn't really make sense at this point that's fine we're gonna go into the concept in more detail and in practical how to implement this cluster okay let's get started I like to paint some image in your mind before we talk about cluster itself I like to describe to you how the tradition uh, the traditional IT system would work say for example you have a company website I like to use Facebook a lot because it's a it's a common website and there's no one in this age and time that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't have word, heard of the word Facebook so let's say we have a, an application here which is a Facebook application and there's a client here so your clients can be yourself from different parts of the world so in this example I'm just going to use to simplify things just three clients so uh, this client is connecting from London this client is connecting from New York and this is probably connected from China so these are just laptops connecting to the application So this is Facebook app. And if I say Facebook app, I'm basically referring to the application server. So if you do www.facebook.com, you're literally connecting to a server somewhere, which may be 10.10.10.5, for example. It's just one physical server somewhere. All right. Now, this application would normally communicate with a database in the back end to retrieve images to store images or do different things so i'll put the database here so this is the back end database db and the name of this db can just be fb which is facebook db right so this application connects to that so what's effectively happening is that when you log on to your computer, maybe from London or New York or China, and you hit the web website Facebook, what Facebook application is going to do is also connect to the to the Facebook database. And usually this Facebook database can be like a SQL Server instance, which would also have its disk or its storage somewhere and this can just be uh, a sun it could be a storage or a network or an ice cozy or or what have you nas the different technologies that help uh, to store data so basically if on the server you're seeing a c drive or a d drive or e drive or whatever drive even though it's physically seen on the server, the storage itself may actually be on a different server entirely, which has been implemented based on different technologies. And an example of such is a SAN, uh, which is also called storage area network or NAS or ISCOS. So there are a bunch of different uh, technologies like that. In a nutshell, the database will be using the sun to store its data and to retrieve its data all right okay so 
for Facebook application to connect to this database there's something we call connection string all right so this connection string is basically something that will be passed into the application code the application may be written in C sharp in Python in Java whatever application within the code of that application will be the connection string in this case the connection string can be something like FB DB which is technically the name of the database server and the port the default port for SQL Server is 1433 that's changeable so in some cases you may not want to leave it at the default and change it to something else 6031 or whatever all right this Facebook DB can all you can also specify something like 10.10.10.2 if that's the IP address of the server and then the port 1433 so whichever one you use um, would basically connect to to the uh, database backend and the reason why you would want to use the uh, server name and not the IP address is in case for some reason you change the server and the IP address changes it's not going to break the code of the application because the new IP address will be resolving to this server name but in a case where you had coded your IP address in the application connection string and after some time the server becomes changed and the IP address changes to something like maybe this becomes seven for example now what's gonna happen is the IP address of the database has changed but in the application code it's still connecting to three and that can break the code and you know the application will start receiving errors so basically in most cases you'll find the connection string uh, presented in this manner right here is where the problem actually is if for some reason uh, there are problems that can occur at any time for some reason uh, this database goes down what happens is the client on this layer begins to receive all manner of errors so it could be error 404 or a database on un unable to reach database the different kinds of error that you you may see on your screen and that's because the database server is unavailable this is where in a standalone configuration like this it, it, this is where problem begin to occur because before your database administrator will come in to salvage the problem and bring up the database server again it may take a few hours it may take days it depends on the nature of the problem that's occurred but that again can also make the company lose a lot of money and that's where the whole concept of high availability begins to come up that's the whole concept of clustering so what I'm going to what I'm going to do now is um, on this side uh, actually so uh, I wanted to clean this off before but I'm not going to do that so, so that we can have uh, some room to play with and then conceptually see both side by side okay I'm gonna draw a margin right here and if we were to deploy a solution that would help us not to fall into this kind of scenario whereby uh, the database server goes down and um, we don't have to wait for days or hours to bring up the new server what would happen is you have a configuration similar to this so you have your uh, your client here depending on where they're connecting from and then your application over here same things no difference so far and the name of the application itself is Facebook right now here is where uh, 
the the whole game changes right you wouldn't have one database server anymore what you would have instead would be either two or more database servers in this case uh, what we had before was fbdb so we can now have let me put the name here fbdb1 and you can have fbdb2 and what happens is it becomes a cluster oops this then becomes a cluster such that when this application is connecting it's not connecting to either fbdb1 or fbdb2 it's basically connecting to this layer and this layer is the cluster layer it's the virtual layer and the name this layer is going to have its own name and the name can now be let's say virtual fbdb simple so to connect to the application to from the application to the database now the connection string would look something like this you now have v f b d b and then the port now here is where the uh, good thing comes if for some reason one of the servers goes down let's say for example this is the primary which is fbdb1 is the primary because one of them will be active at any point in time in a in an active passive configuration right so we're talking about active passive configuration here in an active passive configuration at the moment fbdb1 is active fbdb2 is passive it's not doing anything they both have same configuration but fbdb2 is not doing anything it's just waiting there for a time where something happens for fbdb1 if fbdb1 goes down instantly fbdb2 becomes active and basically the the clients don't even understand they don't even know that anything is happening because all the application is doing is connecting to every db but within this container within this virtual layer there are switches going on and just because the application does not have to connect to every every db1 or 2 the abstraction is being taken care of by the cluster had it been we had every db1 specified in the connection string right here and something happened to every db1 we would need to manually go into the application to now change the connection string to fbdb2 but in this case we don't have to do that no one has to worry no one has to know that something is going on the cluster basically takes care of that but of course the database administration has uh, administrator has to know when something is wrong with either of the environments. So when FBDB1 goes down, the DBA gets an alert and he comes in basically look at the logs and check what the problem is and brings it back up again. At that point, FBDB1 can then become the secondary while FDB, FDB, DB2 remains the primary so that if anything happens to fbdb2 at a later time then there's a role play again which fbdb2 goes away and basically fbdb1 becomes active again and the client don't know what's going on you know so the whole point here is you just have one layer that the application is connecting to that takes care of this problem so there will be no downtime there's there's no issue of waiting or not being able to run the business just because the database administrator is trying to fix the problem and of course um, talking about the storage layer both of them will be sharing the same disk uh, yeah so like we had before our sun here 
they're both using the same disk so that when either of them is active they're using the same data the MDF and the LDF files reside here so when this is active it's using the same data if it was this that's active it's using the same data right so you know it, it, it makes a lot of sense to say with an implementation of a cluster solution we will always have our data available our applications will always be online and that's a whole concept around clustering it's as simple as that so this is what we're going to be doing in the next couple of videos we're going to be implementing them but you have to be aware that uh, this is a role or this is a, a job that will be done by a whole lot of people not just the DBA so the sysadmins the, the systems administrator will be the ones to provide the servers but the DBA would only be in charge of configuring the, the SQL server database and the cluster right so but for the purpose of this training we are going to be both we're going to be both sysadmins and DBAs right so because as DBAs it's also very important for you to understand what the sysadmins are doing how the whole networking has been done how the because the clustering is done on two layers the cluster will be done on the Windows server the cluster would also be done on SQL server so the sysadmin guys would have implemented the cluster on the Windows server first and then SQL Server DBA will then implement their own cluster on the SQL Server side, right? But for the purpose of training and understanding and knowing everything that's going on behind the scene, underneath the hood, we're going to be doing everything all by ourselves. So you're going to have a lot of fun. Make sure you go grab a coffee or something, relax, be prepared to do some work and let's get started. See you in the next video.